most people do not make money in the stock market because of one critical mistake that mistake is that we assume that the stock price when it goes up it will go up in a straight line fashion or when it falls it will fall down in a straight line fashion so we keep tracking the price always but underlying the stock there is some fundamental shift that is happening and we do not focus on that and as a result we miss out on massive money making opportunities let me illustrate that point by telling you the story of punjab national bank and if you check the stock performance over the last 6 months what you will notice is this that it first went down then it stayed sideways then it gave up run then it stayed sideways came down sideways and then again it gave an up run and in the last 6 months when the markets have generally been correcting punjab national bank has given roughly 22% return on top of that if you check the stock performance over the last 1 month you will notice that that entire gain has come up in the last 1 month itself and i was one of the people who was saying that you know what punjab national bank is likely to give an up move it will reach closer to its book value simply because of the fact that a lot of psu banks have given a run up pnb hasn't given a run up it has been sitting on its highest ever profit highest ever revenues etc etc so at that point in time pnb was a deeply undervalued stock and we were simply holding it for an up run now something similar is happening across a bunch of stocks now this is not a recommendation from my side that you go and invest your money in these stocks i'm simply making this video in a very genuine honest manner so that you can go and research more and if you align with my fundamental analysis of these different stocks then you could consider taking some positions but you are responsible i am telling you very very categorically that this is an educational video please do your own due diligence in fact so that you watch this video very closely i am not going to give stock calls i am not going to say that buy this buy that i am going to give you commentary on different ranges of stocks indian and us stocks included some of you have requested a bunch of stocks for me to comment on i am going to do that commentary and then you derive and tell me in the comment box whether i am bullish or bearish about these different stocks this is going to be a macro video i am going to speak about industry trends which are happening and some amazing stuff is happening in it this also includes zomato i am going to give a very quick commentary on zomato also a humble request that please like these type of videos because this would allow more people to get fundamentally educated about the stock market it is very easy for us to come out and give like any type of weird calls here and there but i try to teach stuff fundamentally so please support it by liking this video and also if you are not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel it will help with channel growth also sorry for the interruption in case you are looking to figure out good stocks to purchase i have created some of the small cases you can find the links in the description box so do go and check it out so let me first and foremost very quickly talk about some us stocks and then i will relate it to tech stocks in india so here is a very worrying story that if you take a look at the recent numbers for meta which is facebook you will see that the numbers are down revenues profits growth have somewhat halted as of now and on top of that the stock price are getting crushed for example this is the data from yesterday's trading session and google stock fell by roughly 7% in a single day on top of that meta stock almost fell by 6% in a single day snap has been decimated in the us entire nasdaq is trading at a discount of roughly 30% from its stock so a lot of bad stuff is happening with us tech stocks so we need to understand the underlying fundamental reason as to why us stocks are suffering and what would be the impact of the us tech market on indian stocks so let me present a very quick macro point there now there are three major reasons why the us tech industry is suffering right now and one of the prominent reasons has to do with macroeconomics which is the rise of us dollar for example if you check the current charts you will categorically see that us dollar has strengthened compared to other currencies i am highlighting the word compared to other currency that does not mean that us dollar in itself has gotten strengthened it simply means that compared to other currencies like yen INR bunch of other different currencies US dollar has strengthened for example in a usual year the INR falls by 4 to 5% compared to US dollar but this year INR or Indian rupee has fallen by 10% so what exactly has happened that the US dollar is strengthening so much okay so here is the very quick macro around it in case you don't want to understand these concepts it's fine you can skip this section and move on to the next so the macro is that the interest rates in the US are being increased and the feds have categorically said that hey due to high inflation in order to curb that we are increasing the interest rate 
So whenever the interest rate in a particular country increases, that country's currency usually strengthens. Now think about it. Why? Because of the fact that the interest rate will be offered more in the US. That is what interest rate rise means. So as a result, people want to save their US dollar, not spend it. So as a result, the dollar strengthens. And whenever a country's currency strengthens, what ends up happening is that it hits their country's export. For example, if the INR gets strengthened, then what is going to happen? The other countries people will find INR to be more expensive and they will be able to buy less of INR or Indian products. And opposite happens when US dollar is getting strengthened. In case this concept is complicated for you, please go and check some of my other macro videos. I have helped you understand macroeconomics conceptually so that you will be able to relate that to the stock market. It is very important that you do that and also check the links in the pinned comment. I will put some links of my previous macro videos that you can go and watch. So I hope you get the perspective that as the US exports get hurt, companies like Facebook, companies like Google, companies like Apple, all these companies will suffer because they do majority of their business in US dollar. You might have heard that, hey, you know what, Google is sitting on billions of dollars of cash. So this is the first key reason why the tech stocks in the US are fundamentally getting hurt. But the good news is that this major macro reason has been fully absorbed into the market as of now. Yes, there can be a little bit of downturn because of this news, but it's not as if that all these stocks will keep on falling every time the interest rates are increased in the US. The second key reason why big companies like Amazon, Google, Meta, all these companies are suffering is fairly simple because their ad revenues are getting hurt. Why are ad revenues getting hurt? You need to understand the story here. And you can understand this from a company called as Y Combinator. Please go and zoom this letter. This is a letter that was sent by Y Combinator to a bunch of startups in India. You might have recently noticed that a lot of startups in India are facing a lot of pressure. They are firing people. They are saying that, you know what? We are stopping burning cash. We will focus on profitability. We are trying to become a cash rich company, what not? Why are they doing it? The answer lies in this particular letter and let me read it out with you. Now, this seventh point is very, very important. If you are a post series A and are a pre-product market fit company, don't expect another round to happen at all until you have obviously hit product market fit, all this stuff. Then read point number eight that if you have plan to raise money in the next six to 12 months, you might be raising at the peak of downturn. Now, what does this mean? In simple word, it means that see, the startup money is drying up. Now, why is it drying up? Because the VCs or investors who invest in these type of companies. Why? Because the FII activity is going down. Now, not all type of FII activity is going down. Only a certain kind of FII activity is going down first. Now, what is that certain kind of FII activity? So basically, when you are investing in the market, you are trying to create a portfolio. You will buy assets which are very risky, which are less risky, which are least risky. You will create a portfolio. Similarly, FIIs also create a portfolio. And the risky part of their portfolio is what? First part is of course crypto. The second part is tech stocks. So here they are not investing too much of their money. They are in a way de-risking their balance sheet. Now this money drying up has hit Netflix, it has hit Apple, it has hit all the tech companies in the US and therefore you are seeing the entire Nasdaq getting crushed by 30-35%. Is this situation over? No, but a major part of it has been factored into the market already and therefore now becomes a great time to purchase tech stocks heavily and, and I am also purchasing a lot of tech stocks heavily. Now you say Akshat you have given like such negative commentary, why are you purchasing tech stocks? I'll explain you the reason. So this is what is happening and I can explain this via a simple flowchart. So basically, when you take a look at big tech companies as of now, which is Apple, Amazon, Meta, all this stuff, they are changing their models fundamentally. Now, what do I mean by changing models fundamentally? For example, Facebook has rebranded itself to Meta. Why have they done it? You let me know in the comment box, but the simple viewpoint there is that a lot of businesses are changing from something called as Web 2.0 into web 3.0. Tomorrow I am going to do a post on the difference between web 2.0 and web 3.0 and how it will impact businesses going forward on my YouTube paid member community tab. In case you want to learn all these things fundamentally, you could consider joining it. Reviews have been great so far and I am building a lot of tools at the back end that will now improve your community learning experience going forward. So back to the topic that web 2.0 is getting converted into web 3.0. Very easy explanation here is that a lot of platforms that you are seeing right now, be it Google, Facebook, 
Amazon, all these companies are highly centralized companies. They do not interact with each other. You as a user lose your identity because they put cookies onto your browser, keep tracking you, bunch of other different, different stuff. So that model is web 2.0. Now we are migrating to a newer version of the internet, which is called as web 3.0. Every single large company is experimenting with the web 3.0 space. If you don't trust me, number one, Facebook has changed its name to Meta. Second, Google's CEO has outlined his plan for web 3.0 projects. He is very, very bullish about that space. JP Morgan is experimenting in that stage. At the back end, in the US, a lot of regulation has come for stable coins already. A lot of listing has been done of cryptocurrencies in the form of ETFs. All these changes are there. This is not me trying to push my opinion on you. Please go and independently Google all these things. You will see that the entire web 2.0 world is changing into web 3.0. Now, why this is such a massive thing for tech companies right now? Well, because all the tech companies have said, raising their hand that, you know what? We want to migrate to Web 3.0, or at least a substantial part of our portfolio is going to migrate to newer version of the internet. A lot of new businesses are going to get created on that. So what does that period indicate? It simply indicates that companies which are cash rich companies, for example, Apple, Google, Amazon, all these are cash rich companies. Again, please go and check the size of their balance sheet, how much cash reserves they are sitting on. When you sit on so much cash, what can you do? You can do a lot of R&D in what type of space in this new emerging space called as web 3.0 and that will lead to a period of growth. So in case you are a type of an investor who is of the viewpoint that hey, you know what I'm going to buy Apple, Amazon, all this stuff tomorrow and the stock should go up like this. Please don't buy it. If you are of the view that hey I'm purchasing Apple, Netflix, Google or whatever and it is going to go down like this. No, I can tell you that all these companies are going to give massive returns but at what point they are going to give massive returns when this R&D money which they already have and they are already deploying all these businesses gets converted to growth in some format. That is when you are going to make crazy amount of money through these investments. If you are investing in terms of just flipping these stocks, please do not invest. You need to have a certain vision. You need to understand the underlying fundamentals. Core problems have been solved. That interest rate issue that I was earlier talking about, it is not going to impact these stocks quite aggressively from this point. These are cash rich businesses that have massive R&D money. And if you can be patient for the next few years, these stocks are going to give you massive returns. Now, third and final point why these tech companies are suffering right now is because majority of these companies, be it Google, even Amazon these days, it's making crazy amount of money through its advertisement revenues. In this advertisement game, a company like Snap is completely out of the picture. But if you consider companies like Google, they have always depended on their ad based businesses. Even Amazon is now making crazy amount of money from its ad based businesses. But the entire fundamental nature of advertisement has changed. So there are two prominent trends at play here. So the first key trend is and that comes from the letter that I had shown you earlier that startups are investing or rather burning lesser of their money on marketing. Why? Because they have to turn towards profit very, very quickly. So they don't have insane amount of money to burn at this stage and as a result all these businesses are suffering including Google including Facebook all that stuff now does this mean that these companies are going to continue to suffer for the next three four five quarters also absolutely not because this money is going to get deployed at some stage second key thing what is happening in the ad market for all these major companies is the entire advertisement platform is shifting towards newer trend for example a classic case in point is that YouTube itself is shifting towards short form content a lot of other mediums for example example, TikTok, it is experimenting with a different type of a social model. So all these established companies are also changing their algorithm. So they are going through a fundamental shift. This does not make these companies bad. If you're considering taking some positions in these ad word based companies, be it Google, be it Facebook, etc. These are in good shape. There is nothing fundamentally off. This brings us to a very quick discussion about Zomato. I have been bullish about the stock. At what prices? When the stock price got crushed by 50-60%, that is when I was bullish and I had been buying Zomato. And now go and take a look at FII investing in this company, expand on it and see the list of investors who have now entered into these companies. These are not Fuddu investors who are putting their money in bulk in Zomato as of now. Is this a push from my side to make you invest in Zomato? No, absolutely not. If you cannot see all these underlying fundamental points, please do not invest in a company like Zomato. Okay, let's move on to the second category of company, which is slightly easier to understand. Many of you have messaged me saying that, hey, Akshat, can you talk about a company called as Lux Industries? Is it in a good shape for us to consider investing? 
Well, there are pros and cons. So let me quickly explain that because this is a slightly easier business to understand. So let me very quickly take you through it. And one of the major changes in FMCG space or low end retail space is that people are shifting from low end product to high end product. For example, you might have seen companies like Relaxo, Amritanjan getting crushed or losing a lot of their stock price. What is the reason for that? Pause the video and try to answer there. If you can answer this part, then you will automatically get your answer whether you should be investing in Lux Industries or not. Okay, the answer is very simple that when you are looking at Amritanjan's product or Relaxo's product, what type of products are they going to sell? They are trying to sell value for money type of products, which are Sasta products. Now, unfortunately, what happens with companies like Amritanjan or Relaxo is that they do not have massive pricing power. A contrary example is Hindustan Unilever. For example, if you check Hindustan Unilever stock, it has given massive run up over the last 5-6 months. Why? Because Hindustan Unilever has something called as pricing power. Why does it have a pricing power? Because it is selling slightly more premium things. For example, the shampoo that Hindustan Unilever sells, it would be 5x the price compared to a base shampoo which is being manufactured locally. All these are good companies, even Amritanjan, Relaxo, and even they are trying to move to slightly more premium sector market. Now, Lux Industries is one such business that is successfully doing it. For example, you can check that all these hero heroines have become their brand ambassador. Fun fact about about me that Karthik Aryan was my school senior. So anyways, coming to Lux Industries, what is happening is that this company is trying to move to slightly more premium category products and they are being successful at it. The second key point is that this stock is available at a good price right now. Why? Because of a fundamental issue that has happened with the stock. So what is that fundamental issue? So here, let me explain that to you via the chart. So you will see that from January onwards, this stock has fallen by roughly 56%. So why such a massive fall? of 56% simply because of the fact that the existing management got into insider trading. So Sebi came out and banned Mr. Udit Todi, who is one of the promoters of the company and he still holds existing stake in that company. So you'll say that, hey, this is a case of mismanagement. This is not an ethical company, this, that. Okay. So keeping the moralistic debate aside, there have been a lot of companies that do this kind of shady stuff, but they do exceptionally well in the stock market. I'm not here to pass moral judgments. I'm only here to do stock analysis. So number one, Point that promoters are doing shady stuff. Should I stay away from that stock? Maybe, maybe not. Please listen to this entire conversation. So number one thing is that the stock has corrected by 55%. Take a look at the investor holding. You will see that promoters have a massive holding here. If they do any more shady stuff, they are going to suffer the most because they are internally invested in this company. Third key point and the most important point is that this stock is likely to go up only when FIIs and DIIs start taking positions in this company. Should you hurry and take position in this company? My bet is no, I'm not doing that simply because I do not know what is happening internally with the company. If the promoters are not clean people, you should be a little bit iffy about it. And it's fine. We will buy it at a slightly more aggressive price. Not a problem. Let FII's DII's return. But yes, good point about the company is that the valuation is very fair. It is probably highly discounted. Number two point, the type of products that Lux Industries is currently selling. They are trying to make their products premium and are succeeding at it. They have successfully signed on a lot of actor, actresses, etc, etc. And it is very likely that they will be able to project their product at a slightly premium product, which is always a good sign. By the way, Amritanjan is also doing the same. So I am bullish about Amritanjan. What about Relaxo? You tell me in the comment box. So let's talk about the third and final type of stock and I will do a very quick commentary. And this stock is AU Small Finance Bank. So the bank is great. Here are the current numbers for the bank and the numbers are extremely impressive that they have done well. Even their recent results have done well. There has been no problem with it. The net profits are fine. No problem with it. So someone commented on my community tab section that hey Akshat, you know what? AU Small Finance, good results, everything good, good. But stock price fell the moment that they announced the result. Why is that? Okay, so there is a bit of fundamental issue that is happening in the economy when it comes to banks. So let me very quickly explain that what that issue is. And here is a quick article about it. So you can pause the video and read this. And now let me break it down for you in a very easy to understand language. So in this article, what they are simply saying is that see in 2021, the deposits in the bank were less expensive. Now, how do you judge whether the deposits are less expensive or more expensive and less expensive, more expensive for whom? So we are talking about the banks here. So you might have heard of something called as CASA ratio, current account savings account. So whatever money you are going and depositing it, 
it in the bank, the bank will have to pay you interest on it. That in turn depends on something called as the interest rate. So again, please go and watch my macro video. You will understand this. But these interest rates are very important. So recently you might have seen sitting in 2022 that FD interest rates have been increased. If interest rates have been increased, then who benefits so to say? The customers will benefit more because the banks will have to pay them more interest on their deposits. So taking money from people becomes expensive for the bank. So that is a slight issue that is happening with the banking industry. But this is an ongoing thing. The interest rate keeps on changing. You and I cannot predict whether the interest rate will be increased by how much when. All that analysis we can't do. The worst thing that can happen with banks is that they might stay a little bit sideways. But you need not stress about good banks which are generating good profits, good revenues, that they will go under because of this problem. No such thing is going to happen. So if you analyze AU Finance Bank model and take a look at this chart. This chart is a very very impressive chart. It shows that the total deposit rate has been going up at a very brisk price. The cost of borrowing has also been coming down. So a bank like AU Small Finance is going to get less impacted compared to other banks because of this development. On top of that, if you want to analyze the long term prospects of a bank like AU Small Finance, you need to know two three key trends. The first key trend is consumer spending trend and what you will notice is that this rate and you can check by considering the gradient of the slope that this is much more steeper this this particular curve but this curve is slightly more stable there is hardly any gradient that has been forming now notice the date the date is 2009 this credit flow can be temporarily halted for the next few months few years but it's not as if that this credit flow is going to dry up this so this credit flow growth is going to continue to improve and this is going to benefit the banks the most and especially something like idfc first au small finance bank they are going to become a major beneficiary because these are slightly smaller banks and they will grow at a faster rate simply because of the credit expansion in the economy that is likely to take place. The second key trend is that taking credit in India is becoming easier and easier with time. Here is the growth of the credit card market. It is growing at a 20% CAGR. Now who benefits from the credit card market? Banks. So therefore I am bullish about banks. Now third key factor which can immediately support the growth of AU small finance bank is its housing sector loans. So majority of the business for AU small finance bank comes from the retail segment and they give out a lot of housing related loans not only in terms of buying the house but also construction of the house repair of the house etc etc and they have a big portfolio here with the rebound of the real estate market and the real estate market is right now rebounding it is growing at a faster pace it is very likely that AU bank is likely to do well the best part is that it is still available at a lower price I'm again not pushing from my side that go and invest not invest that's a call that you need to make I'm just simply presenting all the facts for you so that you can go and further test it out and aggregate more knowledge about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this type of commentary, do press the like button and I will see you the next time.